Hey everyone, welcome back to Pete the Wargamer. You're joining me as I tackle another bolt action painting tutorial. Now these guys have been requested quite a bit, and I thought it was time that I finally got around to painting them. I am of course talking about some Japanese infantry, which, if I'm not mistaken, are the only plastic infantry kit for bolt action that I am yet to tackle. As always for my bolt action guides, all the paints that I'll be using in this video have been sourced from the Army Painter range, so if you want to follow along, the full paint list can be found in the description below. So let's get started with the painting. The starting step in painting our miniature is to prime it, and this step is one that is often overlooked, especially by beginners. Primers help to give us a surface that our paint can properly adhere to, as well as giving us a more uniform colour to start the painting process against. There are many methods of priming, be it aerosol, airbrush or brush on, and what you choose is entirely up to you and what you have available to you. As is the colour, however, I've chosen to use a grey primer here, as it will allow us to more easily apply the midtones that will be adding in the next few steps. When tackling a scheme like this, I prefer to paint all of my base coats first, followed by the washes and then finally the highlights. It's nice to see your model progressing at each stage and it prevents you accidentally ruining a good chunk of your paint job with these messier starting applications. Before we apply these paints however, we want to thin them down with a little water. Roughly two parts paint to one part water is an ideal ratio and you're looking for a consistency similar to what you see here. With the paint ready, the first areas to paint are the khaki colour fatigues and the paint I've chosen for this is hemp rope as it gives us that slightly greenish yellow colour. Now because we thin the paint, we're not expecting perfect coverage with this first coat. After this first layer has been applied across the jacket, trousers and putties, we're going to let it dry fully and with that we can then apply a second layer over the top. This will result in a more solid looking base colour than we can build up from. Additionally, it helps to ensure that the paint is applied smoothly and that you're not left with any brush marks in the paintwork. As I've already mentioned, this thinning and layering technique is something that I'll be repeating across the following base coats. The second base coat sees us applying some oak brown to the areas of brown leather. We are looking for a reddish brown leather appearance here and this deep dark brown has just a hint of warmth to it, so it's the perfect candidate for this. Use this paint to cover over the feet, the webbing straps, the leather pouches, the helmet strap, and any other areas that you wish to be this shade of brown. For the stained wood finish of the Arasaka rifle, we'll be using some fur brown. This lighter reddish brown gives us the perfect starting color for this wooden furniture. Next, we need an olive drab color to paint the infantryman's helmet. I've opted to use Venom Worm as it has that muddy green colour that we're looking for. To paint some of the fabric pouches that are carried about the waist, Army Green can be used. This is a more faded and washed out green than the helmet colour and so will help to create a little variation across the model. For the exposed flesh of the hands and the face, I'll be using some Cobalt Skin. Take care here as some of these areas will be close against areas that we've already painted. Try not to overspill if you can, but if you do, don't worry. Simply apply the original base coat over the top and a couple of thin layers should help to cover up that mistake. The only remaining areas to base coat are the metal parts, but instead of using a metallic paint for this, I prefer to start off with the dark grey of Necromancer Cloak. My reasoning for this is that our soldiers don't want to have bright reflective metal that would simply advertise their position, so the steel needs to be blackened. Using this dark grey, will give us this effect. So, now that all the base colours have been applied, we can begin to apply our washes. But first, much like the base coats, we need to thin them down. Instead of using water, I'm using some of the Army Painters Quick Shade Mixing Medium. It's essentially the wash, but without any colour or pigment in it. By mixing this in with equal parts with our wash, we maintain the same paint consistency, but reduce the strength of the wash, which helps to create a more subtle shade. With the wash mixed, you can begin to apply it to the miniature. The first wash I'm using here is the light brown of soft tone, and this can be applied across the whole model with the exception of the skin. The wash will flow into the recesses and as it dries, it will darken them down. By having darker colors in the recesses, we create the appearance of shadow and help to improve the level of detail in the miniature. 
Next up, we can use some dark tone and target this specifically over the areas painted with Necromancer Cloak. Because we use a grey rather than a black early on, we are able to shade it, something that we couldn't have done if we'd used a pure black. The only remaining areas are the skin, and these can be coated with the made-for-purpose flash wash. Personally, I like to thin my mixture down for this just a little bit more and apply a couple of coats rather than just the one. Doing this will help some of the facial features to stand out even more. After you've allowed your washes to dry, we can start on our highlights. To paint most of these, I'll be using the same base color of an area mixed with some arid earth to create a lighter color. Mixing the two paints in equal quantities should result in something that we can use. I'd also recommend adding a little water here just to make the paints a little easier to use. Start off with a mixture of hemp rope and arid earth and use this to highlight the jacket, trousers and putties. To highlight, use a fine tipped brush and carefully drag the brush over the raised folds and details. Focus your application to the upper areas to help simulate how light falls on a person. This lighter color will be better contrast against the darker recesses created by the washes, resulting in a much more detailed looking miniature. Now these highlights are completely optional. You could use your miniature as it currently stands. This will keep the painting time down and allow you to get your army painted up much faster. But if you want your miniatures looking their best, then I would highly recommend these highlights. For the areas painted with oak brown, instead of highlighting with an arid earth mixture, I'll be instead using some fur brown instead. This will help to complete the reddish brown color that we're aiming for. For the rifle, however, you'll want to mix in a little arid earth with that fur brown and pick out the details of the wooden areas. For both the green areas, we will be using our respective base colors mixed with the arid earth. Start off with the helmets, painting the rim and adding a small line at the top too. Then you can use some army green and arid earth to pick out the edges of the fabric pouches carried by our infantrymen. To pick out the facial features and fingers, use some of the lighter skin tone of Corpse Pale. Apply thin lines to the tops of the cheeks, bridge of the nose and also the lips to help add a little realism to them. Finally, we need to add a slight metallic sheen to those metal areas that we base coated with Necromancer Cloak earlier on. These areas, while dulled, would reflect some light, especially if they've been scratched or worn. To represent this, we can apply a very fine highlight of gunmetal to these areas. Once this has been completed, all that's left to do is to apply a suitable basing scheme, give everything a coat of matte varnish to remove any glossy sheen, and apply some jungle tufts which should leave you with something that looks like this. So a huge thank you for joining me with this painting guide, and I hope that you've enjoyed this return to bolt action. I know that I have, and I really hope that you've learned something from it too. As I said, all of the paints that we used to create this guide can be found in the bottom of this video's description. If you'd like to support me and pick up some bolt action or other historical miniatures, then head on over to War Games using my affiliates link below. Anything you buy will send just a little money my way too, at no extra cost to yourselves. Leave me your suggestions for future historical painting guides you would like to see me tackle in the future. And until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.